just like the classic egg drop, today you'll need to design and build a solution that will keep an egg safe when we drop it from the top of our ultimate classroom tower. <laughs> So today, we are going to be doing an egg drop challenge. Now, I know a lot of you have experience with that, but this is an ultimate classroom egg drop challenge, so there's still gonna be some really difficult aspects to it. Now, the underlying idea here, a successful design for your egg drop is going to transfer potential energy to kinetic energy over the longest duration. So the way that you do that is by maximizing time of descent and also minimizing your impact force. So effectively, slow down your egg, and cushion its fall. Make sense? Let's think about potential energy versus kinetic energy. Now, if we think about a graph of the higher you go, the more gravitational potential energy you get, right? So if we have a think about this as, you know, a graph going up like this, this is gonna transfer into kinetic energy as well. And we were talking about maximizing the length of the journey and also when you impact, right? So we know, for example, have a think about, you know, what's something that we know in life that's designed to do this, to actually take that impact, which might be, you know, very, very sharp, and actually spread out that energy over time. What kinds of things do you know that do this? Leonardo? Okay, a parachute's gonna do that. What else? An airbag, fantastic. Um, have any of you guys seen, for example, there's videos online of um, people doing parkour. So they're moving around off these, you know, cool things. And every time they land, what do they do? They bend their knees. They bend their knees. And if they're like super fancy and on the right surface, they will roll, won't they? It's exactly the same deal, right? There's going to be conservation of this energy. You cannot get rid of it. You can't destroy it. You can only go over a longer period of time. So if you have some kind of, you know, break threshold, right? Because if you want to think about it in reverse, there's energy that's holding your egg together. So long as you can stay underneath that, even if it's the same amount of energy over time, it can be distributed safely. Does this make sense? Okay, so we talked before, you mentioned, for example, using a parachute. So that's actually, um, you know, getting this out over a long period of time, doesn't it, before it even hits impact, right? Um, you talked about an airbag, right? You actually are going to collide, but then the collision gets slowed down. So depending on the materials that you use, you can actually also do the same thing with your egg slash eggs, right? And then there's the other thing that we want to think about. You mentioned parachute. We've got an egg here, right? I want us to think about the different forces that are acting on your egg that are pulling it down, pushing it up, right? How many of you study physics? Okay, a few of you. Physics and mathematics are kind of this very, these overlapping disciplines, right? Because physics is about understanding moving objects, but the universe that we live in, objects move according to very reliable rules. They're so reliable we can create formulas and equations for them, right? So here, there's really two forces that we need to have a think about. What's pulling downwards? Gravity. Gravity, gravity right? So you've got your gravitational force here, but the gravitational force that is kind of applied to your egg depends on, well, how heavy the egg is, right? So it's not just G, the gravitational force of the Earth. What else is there? There's, oh yeah. So, I mean, the higher we are, the faster it will go. But I'm actually thinking about the fact that the egg itself could be a small egg, or it could be a big one. So you're gonna have mass here as well. Does this make sense? Now, this is important to understand. You guys probably have heard this idea before, right? Mass is one thing, it doesn't change, right? So you have a mass no matter where you are, whether you're here on the planet's surface, up in space, on the moon, but this, which we call weight, this changes based on the gravitational field that you're in, right? So this is the weight force that's being applied to you. It's what's holding us to the, to the Earth and also to your egg as it drops. Now, when we think about what's going on here, right? This might be, say, a parachute that you create. So there's gonna be some sort of constant here based on how thick the air is, what you're going through. Maybe you're going through water, maybe you're going through air, maybe you're going through high altitude, it's all different. And then this force here, it's relative to, you know how like the more mass there is, the more sort of force downward there is. <clears throat> There's something else that's proportional to the amount of force being applied upwards. Anyone want to suggest what's going on here? The more of something, the more you're being pushed up against. Speed? Yeah, so we would say either speed or velocity if you want to think about direction as well. So if something's moving at fairly so, slow speed, we would call this a linear relationship. So as velocity increases, um, air resistance also increases. If you were moving really, really fast, right? So for example, um, we were talking about landing rovers on Mars, for instance, right? Now Mars doesn't have a lot of atmosphere, so it's a lot harder to slow down. And also to get our 
rover to Mars in like a reasonable amount of time because it's so far away, we want it to be going really, really fast. So this velocity increases. And so in fact, at such high speeds, we talk about quadratic drag. So in fact, the faster you're going, you square that velocity and that's what you're proportional to, okay? So we've got sort of air resistance going on up here and you've got weight going in the opposite direction. Now, this is really interesting for me. I'm like eyeing the producers over there because I'm about to spoil a bit of the lesson, but you're going to find out about it anyway. Just have a look at your work desks for a second. See how there's several eggs, right? Several eggs. Mostly you're used to an egg drop challenge where you have to safely land an egg. Those eggs are not for testing. Those eggs are going to be something you get to make a decision about as a team as to how many eggs you're going to try and save. And your design is going to have to take that into account. Obviously, more eggs, harder to land safely, but there's going to be more of a reward. And do you see how that's going to, the reason I'm mentioning this, right, is do you see how that factors into this? As you increase the mass of what you're trying to land, <laughs> it gets harder and harder to keep everything safe. Does this make sense? In this egg drop challenge, a successful design will transfer potential energy to kinetic energy over the longest duration. So we want to maximize the time of descent and we also want to minimize the impact force, get it as low as possible. Now, this is actually a perfect example, this challenge, of where mathematical reasoning is really important because when you've got precious cargo, right, you don't just want to experiment and test and just see what happens. You actually need to use the mathematics and the equations to let you know what's going to happen before you actually do anything. So, good luck. I can't wait to see what designs you come up with. Our team scramble to protect their precious cargo. How many are you gonna try and save? All of them.